All right, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. I want to talk to you tonight about finding God's wisdom. Finding God's wisdom. And, uh, you know, uh, nobody has arrived spiritually as far as, you know, they, they are wise. And I was thinking about this Monday when I was going back over this, and it made me think of Solomon, you know, when he, you know, basically God was talking to him, says, you can have anything. And if you remember one of the things that he said, or the first thing he said, is he wanted wisdom. And so I can kind of relate to that, folks. Uh, wisdom, and there's all kinds of definitions. I didn't write a definition out. But my short-term definition, wisdom is knowing the mind of God and doing it. Okay, you can know the mind of God, but if you don't follow through and do it, uh, then you, you are not wise. And uh, I, I really can't tell you how important it is to have God's wisdom in your life. Everyone has to make decisions every day in their lives, so having wisdom will help you make, you make the right decision every time. Think about it. God wrote a whole book that has 31 chapters about wisdom. All of life is a spiritual journey, and we need, to, we need help going through this thing called life. Only four things can point you in the right direction every time. Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, and His Holy Word. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 3 to find out how we, be, how we can become wiser in God's eyes. The outline is, number one, we can be wiser through knowing God's law. Knowing God's law. Number two, we can become wiser through trusting God. Trusting God. Number three, we can be wiser through honoring God. Honoring God. And number four, we can become wiser through obeying God. Obeying God. So let's look at these four things that I want to encourage you uh, to seek in your own life. Proverbs 3, verse 1, My son, do not forget my law. And again, you know, when Proverbs was written, you know, we're in the Old Testament, and there wasn't the New Testament, and, and the laws, uh, you know, started, you know, after Genesis and Exodus, and then, you know, uh, uh, you know, up the laws, uh, uh, the Ten Commandments, that's what I was trying to get to. Uh, they were some of the first laws uh, that we see in God's Word. So they are talking about the Word of God here. But let your heart keep my commandments, that thou shalt not, okay, which we know very well, for length of days and long life and peace they will add unto you. Hold your finger there and go to Psalm chapter 1, talking about God's law. Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So what is it talking about? He's talking about the world there. We don't need to run with the world. We need, don't need to take on worldly values, okay? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And the law is, folks, the Word of God, okay? The Word of God. And when you think of the law, it's something that you need to obey also. So he is telling us we need to know the law and we need it to be a part of our life. And his law, he meditates day and night. And, when, and this is where I get starting, the, starting your day out in the Word of God. And folks, I've done this for years, okay? When, after I get my shower and I get everything, I get woke up and get my first cup of coffee, I get the Word out and I spend time in the Word. And the last thing I do, I have basically three devotions that I go through in a day's time. And I'm not bragging, I'm just telling you uh, what I do in my personal life. And that's why I think a uh, minimum we ought to get in God's law, start the day with it, and end the day with it. Okay? And it says, and he shall be like a tree planted by uh, the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit 
in season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. And folks, we, we know the, you know that the thing that a tree needs more than anything else, I mean, it gets the sunshine, but it has to have water to bloom. It has to have water uh, to thrive. And anytime you see a tree by a river or a body of water, they will, you know, thrive. And it says, it will bring forth fruit. There's fruits. I mean, think about the fruits of the Spirit. Where do we get those? We get that in, in the Word of God. And whose leaf shall not wither. And folks, some people do. You know, they dry up spiritually because they're not spending enough time in the Word. The Word is full of wisdom. All right? We, 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 we need to look at it every day. And it says, and whatever he does shall prosper. So we will prosper and we will grow as Christians if we will know God's law. That's how we know right from wrong. I mean, I know we have the Holy Spirit that helps us. But we have to put good things in our minds. We have to put God's law in our hearts uh, so that we will grow. And then look back in our text, and it says, and peace it will add unto you. Folks, there's nothing like, uh, you know, reading your Bible at the end of a day and saying your prayers and just falling off to sleep. It, it's a beautiful thing when you do that. And one of the things, Lord gets frustrated sometimes with me. We'll, I'll, I'll do my Bible study, I'll get in bed, and we'll start talking. And then she said, you did it again. I said, what? She said, we were talking, and you fell asleep. And I said, you're not boring, honey. It's just that I, I'm at peace with things, all right? I just, I just got, you know, fed through the law. And to have that peace of mind, folks, everyone is seeking peace in their lives. Verse 3, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Both of those are part of God's law. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And it's just like a necklace. You know, you can see necklaces, especially on ladies. All right? And, and I love it when I see a necklace and a cross on a la lady's neck like that. I, I like the, you know, the crosses or, or some kind of, you know, design uh, on the earrings, all right? They are reminders of who we are and what we should be about. And the Word of God does that. The Word of God is reminders of whose we are and what we're about. Write them on the tablet of your heart and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. And finding favor is having God's favor in your life. Folks, you want God's favor in your life. And you can have that through spending time in the Word. And it says, and high esteem, all right? God loves you uh, to spend time in His Word. God loves to see you meditating over Scripture. And it's not only pleases God, but also, man, people around you will know that you're a Christian. Uh, it's, it's just like, you know, when I come into situations and people ask me questions, I try to always have not just a verse, but the verse and the text where that comes from so that they can go and look it up for themselves. And I've told people that, you know, go to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you know, and, and I, I quote it, but I says, spend time with that. So there's so many good things that comes from knowing God's law. Psalm 119, look back, just not too many pages. Psalms, Psalms 119, verse 10. With my whole heart, I have sought you. Folks, that's all of you. That's everything surrendered to God. Oh, let me not wander from your commandment. And here's what I tell people that say this, well, I'm just too busy to, and then they fill in the blank to read the Bible, to go to church, to do these things. And my next statement is, you are too busy. Something needs to change. God, we have to put God first. But seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And doing that, you have to spend time in God's word. 
And here's verse 11. And your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. And folks, the Bible tells us in, in other scriptures that we need to be ready when people ask us questions. We need to be ready to defend the faith. We need to be ready to tell someone what the Bible says. And the more verses that you can turn to and the more verses that you can quote, and the deal about memorization is you're not always going to have a Bible with you, folks. But we need to be able to spit out those verses. And, and some people, here's the excuse I hear, well, I can't memorize anything. Well, folks, there are very few people that have that photographic memory where they do it one time. And to be honest with you, those people, well, I'll just say annoy me. <laughs> And I'm kidding. But, it, you know, it's crazy when you get around somebody like that, that they can read one thing and, and get an A in it, you know. And I've, I've been around students like that. But here, the key for me to memorize Scripture, I have to put it on an index card, and I have to go over it, 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 till it sinks in. That's what meditating, that's what memorizing does, so that you will be ready and the other thing about wisdom is, folks, people are seeking, other people are seeking wisdom, all right? And we need to share the wisdom that God gives us. I'm not talking arrogantly or showing off or just trying to be super spiritual. I'm trying to say, you know, thus saith the Lord. Man, the Word of God speaks to this subject, and we need to know God's law if we are going to find wisdom. You know, the will of God can be found in the Word of God. The will of God can be found in the Word of God. And there's many times that I've been reading through the Word of God, and He will give me a sermon outline. Uh, he will give me a devotion. He'll give me an answer to somebody uh, that I, I may be counseling in the future. They made an appointment. They've told me about what it was. And He'll give me a word in that. So we need the let me just flip that the more you read god's word the wiser you'll become okay number two through trusting god through trusting god and you know uh proverbs 3 5 and 6 is one of the most quoted scripture in proverbs and in the word of god but it has so much truth to it trust in the lord with all your heart what does it say the Bible tells us to love the Lord God with all of our soul, heart, and mind, okay? We need to trust God for everything. Folks, God knows what we're going through. God knows every need that we have. God knows when we're hurting. God knows when we need answers. God hears our prayers. We trust God for salvation. But folks, that's the beginning of the journey. We never get to where, and, and sometimes we do this, we try to fix things ourselves. We try to fix things, and then when it, we don't get it done, we get frustrated. Folks, we must start with God, walk with God, and end with God in, in all situations of life. Trust Him with your life. Trust Him with your family. Trust Him with your job. Trust Him with your finances. Trust Him for the future. Trust Him in everything. And then with all your heart simply means, you know, uh, He's not wanting part-time Christians. Folks, He wants, you know, because the true thing is, you know, I, I was going to teach and be a coach, and all I had to do is my student teaching at the end to, to, to do that before I got called to the ministry. And folks, I, I was around athletics uh, I played football, uh, baseball. I was going to coach baseball was what I was going to do. That was my plan. And you take, and, and let's just take basketball. You take five guys that will work together and that work hard and will do, you know, you know just give 100%. I would take that over any superstar star team, okay? Because they, you know, they, they're playing for themselves, they're looking, you know, I can tell that at halftime when I hear somebody say, how many points have I got? Folks, I'm telling you, we need to give God 100% of our hearts, our lives, our souls, and our minds. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. Folks, there's a lot of things in life I don't understand. Okay? I don't understand. You know, and, and this is a thing. I, I'm just telling you, it's one of the hardest things. I don't understand why babies die. All right? It's heartbreaking. I've been at hospitals. I've seen uh, mothers with, with them in their hands. And you have no words to say. All right? And you just have to keep telling them, we've just got to trust God. We've got to trust God. All right? God has a plan. You've got to believe that He does. Lean not unto your own understanding. I don't understand, uh, you know, why, why people get let go at jobs. I don't understand why, you know, uh, they, the, the finances are, are not there at times. All right? There are a lot of things in life that I don't understand. There are a lot of things in life that seem unfair. But folks, we have to trust God. God has a way. God has a way out. Uh, God is there for you. He's going to walk through every problem, health problems, okay? Health problems is another one that comes up a lot in my life, in my line of work. I don't understand, but we have to just keep trusting God. In verse 6, in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Folks, God's not hiding from you. God's not mad at you, okay? He, here it's saying, you just keep God first in your life. Keep trusting, keep believing, and He will show you the way. The Bible tells us that, that Jesus is light. He is going to light the way. There's a solution to every problem you have in life. God has the solution. God has the comfort. Jesus is the great shepherd. Jesus, the, the Holy Spirit, is the comforter. So even when we can't see God's hand, we have to trust His heart. We have to trust His heart. And, it's, and it says in verse 7, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And again, folks, it, you know, we, everybody has an opinion. Everybody tries to you know, make suggestions and give advice. But we, we can't get to where we feel self-sufficient. Okay, Man, we need God every day of our lives. We need God. And it, then he says, fear the Lord, respect the Lord, respect God wor God's word, and depart from evil. All right, we don't need any kind of sin or evil in our lives. In verse 8, I love this, it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Folks, even when we feel like we can't go on, you can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Proverbs 4, just look across the page. Proverbs 4, verse 5. Look at this, get wisdom. That's a exclamation point all right he's commanding you to do this he's telling you to do it get wisdom you never have enough you never have uh, uh you know uh arrived spiritually get understanding do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth that's god's holy words you can't do it on your own you can't make it on your own you need god do not forsake her for she will preserve you Love her and she will keep you. It's talking about wisdom here, folks. We need to love wisdom. We need to seek wisdom. And it says wisdom is the principal thing. It's not the one and only thing that is Jesus. But it's the principal thing. And we need principles in our lives. We need guidelines in our lives. We need to, and, and really, I know this, it's so simple and I've said it a thousand times in my lifetime. I started it when I was a youth minister. The simple brace that, that says, and you want wisdom? What would Jesus do? All right, would Jesus chew out that nurse? <laughs> would Jesus run a red light? Would Jesus uh, give bad advice? Would Jesus get mad, uh, you know, about something? And, you know, and, and again, folks, every answer in the Bible, is, there's an answer, and it's wrapped around Jesus. And Jesus 
knew what wisdom was. It is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Oh, folks, if we can get this in our heads, get wisdom. We will hear this when we get into heaven. I believe with all my heart, if you speak wisdom with all your heart, all right, well done, my good and faithful servant. And folks, everybody's had a job, everybody has made money, and everybody wants to please the boss. Everybody wants to be good at what they do. And the same thing is true in our Christian life. It takes work to be a Christian. You've got to work at it. It just doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't come naturally. And I know the, the spiritual side of that, but we need wisdom in our life. And we have wisdom by knowing God's law and through trusting God. Number three, matter of fact, uh, I just thought of this, the song that comes to my head, Steve, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. I can't wait till I get to heaven. That's one thing about working with and listening to Bob Shelton. He'd be preaching along there and he'd just start singing. And he, he had the most beautiful baritone voice. I'm telling you, uh, I'm going to have a beautiful baritone voice in heaven. All right? Number three, through honoring God. Look at verse nine. Honor the Lord with your possessions. With your possessions. And you say, what's that got to do with wisdom? Oh, it has to do a lot with wisdom. There are laws of God's that always work, folks. The, his laws always work. And a problem that a lot of people have is with their possessions, or, or let me just let me put it the American way, their money, all right? And folks, we don't have a money problem at this church. It's obvious that there are a lot of people doing what the Word says on the giving of money. But I am telling you, uh, it came up in a conversation last week with, with, with somebody that I, I was talking to. And basically, you know, the children of a, uh, someone who deceased were fighting over the money and the division of the money. And here's what I've always said, folks. And I told my sister, my baby sister was the one, uh, was the executor to the will. And at the day of the funeral afterwards, I said, Susan, if I don't get a dime, that's okay with me. Okay, I will not be at odds with my family over money. Okay, and I am telling you, business partners, families, all these things. And folks, the second side of that is we need to be wise with our money. Okay, we, we should want to be able to give when there's a cause. And if you are wise with your money, when those causes come up, I, I'm just telling you, I love this church because if we say this is a legitimate need, boom, we have, we have the money for it. We, we'll raise the money for it. It's because people are faithful and honoring God with their tithes and their offering. And we know that tithe is 10%, 10% of, of what you make. And an offering is anything that you give above that. But this is what it says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. And folks, God promises to take care of you if you will do your part in giving. And let me say this, you cannot outgive God. You can't do it. Because do you realize all of giving is not just money? You give of your talent to God, okay? Giving out good advice shows wisdom also, all right? It's, it's about being well-rounded in your giving. The, the money part is just, and I am telling you, since I, little, little, I remember when we first started, uh, you know, our parents was teaching us tithing when we just, I mean, it's like we had an envelope when we were probably five, four or five years old. It started with a dime, then it went to a quarter, and then it went to a dollar when we got into junior high, and it, it got more, and, and, and they just taught us the principles of giving, and wise people do that, 
because they understand you can't outgive God. And do you realize also that giving is an act of worship? It's an act of worship. You are giving to God when you give. And, and again, I know I'm probably preaching to the choir here tonight because y'all are coming on Wednesday night. Y'all, y'all are probably the most faithful group we have. But I'm simply saying we need to honor God uh, through, and, and when we honor God, we find wisdom. Luke chapter 6. Luke 6. Luke 6, verse 38. I love this verse. Give, and it will be given unto you. Now, it's not one of these, okay, Lord, I'm going to put this in the plate, and it's 20 bucks. I read this first, and you're going to give 20 bucks back to me. All right? No, no. Your attitude in giving is, is very, very important. And you know, when it comes to giving, too, there have been people that have borrowed things from me. There have been people that borrowed, you know, wanted money and said, I'll pay you back. And folks, I never ask them for the money. And there have been people that have never paid me back. And I don't know why. Maybe it's just me. But I find it easy to let go. I really do. Because truthfully, it's not my money anyway. It's God's. God gives me the ability to work and to make money. All right? And again, I'm not going to lose a friendship. I, I let a guy borrow a shotgun when I was in college friend of mine that we used to run around with never never said a word never gave it back i never asked him a question that way you know what you'll always have the right attitude towards that well aren't people going to take listen folks i'd rather them take advantage of me uh, than me lose a friendship over over money or possessions okay given it will be given to you good measure pressed down shaken together Ooh, I like this one, running over. Don't you love it when it runs over? All right? And it says, will be put into your bosom, for with the same measure that you use it, it will be measured back to you. And you have to understand, folks, it's not always money, even health. Man, if you were able to walk in here tonight, you have decent health, if nothing else. You woke up this morning, God gave you another day to live. Folks, we have to look at things besides money, okay? Friendship, worship, fellowship. I mean, you think of all that God gives us, and, uh, you know, he, he, he can, folks. I'm, I'm telling you, my cup runneth over, Psalm 23. And then 2 Corinthians 9, 2 Corinthians 9, and it's the law of the harvest. It's what we call it, verse, verse 6. But this I say, who sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he who, he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. And I'm telling you, the world does not understand that, okay? It's like the more you give, the more they want to get, okay? They think because you're giving a lot. Matter of fact, Jesus was with the disciples. You know, the, you know what I'm fixing to say, the widow's might. Man, all these, they were standing there with some of the disciples, and man, all these rich folks were coming in, and they were throwing bills in, and throwing bills in, and throwing bills in. And then comes this lady, and she throw, throws two widow mice in. And Jesus didn't stop her, let her go through, and said, let me tell you who gave the most today. You know what the world says? Ooh, it's that dude that gave them big bills, them $100 bills. Jesus said, no, not at all. It's that lady that gave everything. She gave all that she had. Folks, I'm telling you, that's abundant living. When, and you talk about trust, okay? She didn't have money to give away, but she knew. I mean, God obviously told her what to do, okay? And every once in a while, folks, I will, I will tell you, he'll test you in giving, and he'll test you in your attitude towards giving. And we need to pass. We need to be wise and pass that test. Verse 7, so let each one of you give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Oh, folks, man, it, you know, I just, I, I just loved, you know, just like Sunday, you know, we had a fundraiser for the youth, and, you know, I couldn't wait till Monday morning till they let me know, you know, what, what do we do? What do we do? Well, we gave 3800 and something dollars 
to help our kids out, to help our kids with camp. Uh, folks, that, that's, I mean, the, you know, if one kid gets saved, you can't put a price on a soul, folks. Okay? Giving to mission. Okay? That's spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right? And, and there, giving. You, you honor God, and you are wise when you honor God through giving. Number four, through obeying. Through obeying. My son. Notice that's the second time he says my son. All right? Being wise. All right, we are children of God. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Well, what does that have to do with wisdom? Because the more wise you are, the wiser you are, the less you're going to be chastened. It's kind of like my dad. Steve, Steve said this. I was telling something when we were in prayer time. Us three, Cody, we, we have prayer every morning that we work. We start our day with prayer. And I, I was telling some story, and I can't remember what it was th this morning. And, and Steve looked out, and he said, and I said, yeah, my dad got really. And then Steve goes, what my dad quoted all the time, what were you thinking? If I had a dollar for everyone, every time my dad asked me in 18 years what I was thinking, I could buy me a new Harley tomorrow. Because... And I got where I just, I, I would either not answer or I'd say, Dad, I probably wasn't thinking, you're right, son. <laughs> you know, and, and that's, what it, that's what it's saying, okay? Uh, God does have to correct Christians. His Word says that. And there's two things about being corrected. Number one, you ought to be happy that God corrects you because He only corrects his children he disciplines his children for instance i don't discipline your kids i don't discipline your grandkids all right when mine gets out of line you know and they they just look at me you know they <laughs> i mean very rare very rare matter of fact Lori had this deal on the refrigerator it said grandma's paddle and it had a stick on it with a pillow at the end of it <laughs> And I always just laughed about that. Because, folks, there's times, I'm just telling you, there's times we, we really do. And, and, again, I'm just giving an opinion here. I think that's where our schools have gone wrong also. Used to, when you got to the, I, I didn't get a lecture, and I wasn't put in time out. Mr. Stever at Cleveland Elementary in Lawton, Oklahoma, knew my first name. Okay? And he lit me up more than once in first through sixth grade. Okay? My father lit me up several times. He was disciplining me. Why? Because he loved me and because he wanted me to do the right thing. And folks, you know, when we mess up, you know, God is going to correct us. And wise is the man, the man or the woman that does not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. We need correction. God corrects us to attitude. See, we don't blatantly do things, you know, all the time as Christians. But man, I'm telling you, there are a lot of Christians that need attitude adjustment. All right? Not that I'm going to do it. I'm not. Okay? You know, I, I don't, you know, I, I've been chewed out. And let me, t let me say this, too, about church. If you went to, ch if you've went to church, any church, over 20-something years, Somebody probably has offended you then, okay? Some way, somebody has offended you. And folks, I will not let that, number one, keep me from serving God. Number two, I, I won't let it affect my attitude. I'm, I'm not going to be mad at them. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to just have an attitude. I'm not going to quit speaking to them, all right? We're all brothers and sisters in Christ, but there's times that, that God just has to. Out of his, you know, so that we can be wiser, so that we can understand what we did was wrong. Okay, he disciplines us. Verse twelve: For the for uh, whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as his father, just as a father, uh, in uh, the son whom he delights. And folks, uh, the key to avoiding God's wisdom. All right, if you want to write something down tonight, this might be a good one. Okay, the key to avoiding God's wisdom is to listen 
and obey the Holy Spirit. If you will listen to the Holy Spirit, if you will obey the Holy Spirit, you will not be chastened by God. Okay? Uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews 12. Verse 5. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord love, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receives. And then back down in verse 11. Verse 11. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present but painful. All right. I remember when, when my mother used to get a hold of me when I was younger, older, when I, as I got older, her whoopings really didn't hurt, but I acted like they did. All right. So she would quit. But when they were young, when I was young and I, I got a belt to me, you know, she, we, we, we did what I call the circle. I'd be trying to run away and she's going like this, trying to hit me and going like that. And, and she said, and she would say the words, well, this hurts me more than it hurts you. And I would say, well, just quit and we'll both be happy. But it never worked, okay? <laughs> but it says, but painful, nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable, fr peaceable fruit of righteousness to whom they have been trained by it. I remember a coach that I had in junior high in eighth grade. All right, and uh, I, two sports, uh, football and baseball, I got to play on the ninth grade team as an eighth grader. We had a coach. I don't remember his first name, but his, his name was Popper. And uh, after one practice, we was in the showers, and we were just goofing off, popping each other with towels and stuff. And Coach Hopper got us in there. You know, he made us put our gym shorts on, and he said, y'all line up. Now, folks, our bodies were wet, and he got a paddle, and he lit us up. And that was the last one I got from Coach Hopper, because when he walked in the room, man, it was, yes, sir, no, sir. I'm sitting in the corner, whatever you want, okay? And that's what I'm saying, folks. You know, sometimes even the discipline from God, you know, you're just thinking, why, Lord, why? Folks, there's always a reason. God has a purpose in everything he does, all right? Sometimes it's not because we've done something wrong. That's the, that's the flip side of this coin, but because there's something he wants us to learn something he's teaching us through situations. So we can either learn it or we can go through the situation again. Folks, our God loves us, and the best way to find wisdom is just obeying God. I mean, it's real simple, folks. When we obey God, man, I'm telling you, he gets a big smile on his face. When he sees us exercising discipline in our own life, when he sees us using the wisdom that we have got from him, the understanding that we got, the, the calmness that we have in a tense situation, a, you know, uh, where things could escalate and things could get, get mean and things get ugly and we don't. And folks, here's the deal about arguing with people. All right, it takes two to argue. All right, some people are just testing. Some people just, they're trying to punch, you know, your buttons. And that's what I, you know, <laughs> Jonathan, you know, he, he was basically a good kid, but man, he knew how to push Lori's buttons. And I'd tell her several times, Lori, if you just act like it don't bother you, it would do better. So what I'm saying is, it's not always chastening, you know, when, when, he, when the, the discipline seems like uh, it's chastening, but it could be that he's trying to teach us a biblical lesson, or, or even, uh, you know, a fruit of the Spirit that, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but the last fruit of the Spirit, and I, I'm much better than I used to be, but I still have, I still struggle with the, the fruit of, of patience, okay? And I, I would say, most people in here would say that themselves. But folks, the wise person, the wise person will just take on the mind of God and we will use patience in uh, all that we say and all that we do. Father, thank you for the day. Uh, God, just thank you that we can have wisdom. We can find God's wisdom in our life. 
God, I pray, Lord, that we would be thorough in, in reading our word. God, I pray, you know, it's, it's life to a Christian. It, it's the IV. It, it's the, you know, everything that we need. And so, God, I pray that we would be wise by knowing your law. And God, I pray that we would trust you in all situations. Not when it's easy, Lord. Trust you when it's hard. And God, I pray we would honor you and be wise with our the fruits of our labor. And Lord, uh, I pray that we'd be givers, uh, that we would just love people. And Lord, we would try to help those who are hurting. And God, uh, just uh, obeying. Lord, I, I've been to your woodshed, man. I've been there. And Lord, uh, I, I know it's hard. But God, even when you come out of those, uh, Lord, I pray that we'd have the right attitude. God, I pray we would learn our lesson. And God, I pray that we'd determine not to do it again. But God, I, I want to thank you for correcting us. I really do. And I know you always correct us in love. But God, thank you for that. Thank you for your word. I thank you that we can be wise. Maybe not to man, but to be wise in God's eyes. Now that's a good thing. So, God, I pray that we would pursue wisdom with all of our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.